Alrighty, Josh Room from East West Alien Promits. Today, what I want to talk about, I'm not sure what I want to talk about actually, but I want to talk about leaky gut syndrome and I want to talk about how foods can cause or dysfunction in the GI system can cause a food intolerance and how that can actually develop into a food sensitivity or food allergy. So when we talk about food intolerances, there's actually no immune system reaction when you have a food intolerance. So that's an example of like a, a sucrose intolerance or a lactose intolerance. And I've talked about this before in many of my videos. Uh, first, I want to say thanks to people out there that are noticing my beard and say I look like a wolverine or a wolf or a badass. I appreciate it. I just want a vacation. I didn't shave. When I got back, I didn't feel like shaving. So it's not something I'm going to keep forever. It's just something I haven't really gotten to in the past week or so. But thanks. So when we eat foods, right, they go into our stomach. Our stomach releases certain enzymes. That food goes into the small intestine, and it's the acidity of that food that enters the small intestine that causes release of um, certain uh, uh, enzymes from the pancreas, from the liver, gallbladder, on and on and on. But when it's in your small intestine, that's where you absorb most of your food. Your small intestine has uh, villi. They look like uh, hands in your stomach or folds. And on those microvilli, you have villi. At the top of those villi, the villi release lacteals to break down fat. They release lactase to break down lactose. They release sucrase to break down sucrose. So if you're eating a shitty diet like most of Americans do, and you're eating processed conventional foods that are in a box that don't have any, um, any type of nutrients in them, or you're eating foods that are high in, in uh, just inflammatory uh, substances, chemicals, on and on and on and on and on, you're drinking lots of alcohol, maybe you're doing recreational drugs, you're taking a lot of medications. The bottom line is these villi over time will start to atrophy. And there's a problem with that because the microvilli at the top now can't release sucrase, lactase, and lacteals to break down fats, sugars, and milk and things like that. At the same time, between the microvilli, you have these things called tight junctions. And when you eat foods, there's a, a hormone that's released. It's called zonulin that actually helps to enter the, I'm sorry, helps to open up the zonulin so you can actually absorb your food. The problem is when there's chronic inflammation and these villi actually start to kind of atrophy in a sense, food will actually ferment and putrefy in your small intestine, meaning it just kind of sits there. And when it sits there, it's equivalent to like throwing food away in a barrel and just leaving it there. It kind of rots. And when it rots, it can actually give off bacterial toxins, which can cause a cascade of gastrointestinal, autoimmune, detoxification issues, cognitive issues, you name it. That's another YouTube clip. But at the same time, this is how we actually develop a, a food sensitivity. So when this happens and you can't release those, you end up lactose intolerance, sucrose intolerance, you can't break down fats. That's actually a food intolerance. Now, how does that develop into quote unquote leaky gut syndrome in developing food sensitivities? Well, the problem with that is as the food particles slip through, you know, when there's chronic inflammation in the gut, that um, molecule that I talked about, the zonulin, or that, that hormone that keeps those tight junction open, it's almost like a, uh, a switch that keeps the doors open. Anytime there's chronic inflammation, there's inflammatory markers that are released that actually overstimulate the zonulin, Z-O-N-U-L-L, Z-O-N-U-L-I-N, and they actually keep the doors open 24-7, so now more food particles are going to slip through. And now what happens is the foods that you're eating, the average person eats about seven foods within a week or actually within their lifetime. We're always eating the same foods. And most people are eating refined processed foods. And most people are eating foods that are high in gluten and things like that. They're going to slip through those tight junctions and actually enter the bloodstream, actually overload your immune system and overload the detox system. So when that happens, your body actually starts to see those food particles as what we call antigens. These antigens are like uh, foreign invaders that our body doesn't like. So what happens is our immune system actually develops antibodies to fight these antigens. Now, this is when you start to have an immune system reaction because these antibodies are part of your immune system. And this is when you develop what's called an IgG or an IgA reaction. This is why the best test to see if you're actually a gluten intolerant is beside a, um, I think it's called a transglutamase test, but also the IgG or an IgA test. Um, 
you want to test for both those to see if you're gluten intolerant because it affects two different parts of the immune system. The bottom line is that's how you actually can turn a food intolerance into a food allergy or sensitivity. But the bottom line is food uh, intolerances do not affect the immune system. It's usually dysfunction in the GI system that leads to um, issues elsewhere in the body. So I hope you enjoyed this little clip, and let's go on to the next one. So what I want to talk about next is kind of a mystery. We have to ask ourselves why estrogen is so highly touted as the you know, hormone that women need to take if they want to get pregnant, if women need to take if they want to actually balance their hormones. When the funny thing is that most of the bioavailable hormones in our body are actually in the tissues and less than 2% are actually in the blood, and doctors are taking blood tests for these hormones. They're not even taking them the right time of month. And then they get the blood values, and pe people come in with tons of symptoms, and they say, oh, well, you're actually normal. Or they get the blood values, and they don't even give specific dosages. They just put, put most people on these hormones and push them way above even where they need to be. It's a mystery why we're putting women, so many women, or doctors are putting so, so many women on estrogen. Now, it's really not a mystery. It really comes down to money. But it's a mystery because if you look at the side effects of estrogen, it causes tissue hypoxia. It causes blood clotting. It pulls oxygen and glucose from the tissues. I'm trying to find my list here. Um, it's been shown over time to cause breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, fibroid tumors, pituitary tumors, lung cancer, liver cancer, bowel cancer, kidney cancer, many types of cancers, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, osteoarthritis, allergies, optic neuritis, epilepsy, depression, low blood pressure, fainting, shock, migraines, gallstones, gallbladder issues, hypothyroidism, blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, miscarriages, birth defects, skin discoloration, aging, on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And this is from supplementation, but at the same time, this is actually from having excess in the body. So I've talked about Dr. Lee, and he coined the term estrogen dominance, as well as Ray P. talks about this. It's basically not enough progesterone to actually counteract estrogen. And you can refer to many of my YouTube clips on this. But we want to talk about why women are taking it. Because research shows that as women age, you actually start producing progesterone. Progesterone is a progestation hormone. It supports the fetus. Estrogen is not. It actually deprives your organs in excess, or if unopposed from progesterone, it actually pulls oxygen from your uterus, from your organs, it pulls glucose from these organs, and essentially, if, a, if an embryo is implanted into the, the wall of the uterus, and your estrogen dominant, the tissues of it actually being suffocated are high, and according to Ray Pete and Dr. Lee, that this can actually lead to miscarriage, because you're suffocating the fetus. So if women are actually aging and producing less progesterone and they still have enough estrogen, why are we giving them estrogen? You still produce estrogen in your adrenal glands, even if you have those uh, female organs that are producing it taking out. You're still producing it in your adrenal glands as you age, up to 40 to 60% in the body. You're still producing it in your fat cells because the f unfortunately the fatter you are, the more you're producing and more people are awake. So we're seeing so many women that are estrogen dominant, meaning producing so much estrogen and unopposed to progesterone. So the question is why are people or why are doctors over prescribing this? It's money. You have to start doing the research. You have to start understanding that if you are estrogen dominant, you're having all these symptoms. Night sweats, that's a sign of estrogen dominance. Hands down. Estrogen stimulates cortisol production. It basically causes sweats. Um, at the same time, estrogen desensitizes the cells in the brain and the pituitary that um, are kind of in tune with FSH and LH, on and on and on. Weight gain, edema, mood, they've shown that excess estrogen actually causes the kind of the rage in men. So they've shown that men on testosterone, excess, tes uh, excess testosterone in men is actually converted into estrogen in the brain, and that's what causes the roid rage in men. It's not the testosterone. So all these things that women are experiencing, weight gain, water retention, uh, blood clotting, strokes, infertility, all these things, um, not ovulating, all these things are sign of estrogen dominance. So what's my, what's my lesson here is really do the research and, and understand why you're being put on this. Look at the stressors in your life, but at the same time, research other hormonal replacement therapies, I should say, such as pregnenolone, such as progesterone things like that, to bring your body up to normalcy. So hopefully you've enjoyed my two YouTube clips today. They're really just quick educational ones. I really appreciate all the support. Get the stuff out there. I love educating everyone. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend.